Hello, everyone. Welcome to our daily learning video. Sue, come on out. Our friends are here. Look, Sue, do you want to wave hello? Sue, do you hear something? Do you hear something? Well, those are crickets and they're right here. That's what you're hearing. <laughs> That's because today our letter is Q and Q is for the very quiet cricket. We're going to read that book in just a little bit. Right now, Sue, if you'd like to, you can sit down on the carpet and let's talk about our letter of the day, letter Q. That's the uppercase and the lowercase Q. Can you say Q? Q. Good job. Q is for quail. That's a type of bird, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. No, we're going to talk about the very quiet cricket, although these crickets are not very quiet at all. So you'll hear them chirping all during our class. Let's decorate the letter Q and Q is also for quilt. So that's how I'm going to decorate my Q. I'm going to put some little fabric pieces, some little fabric squares on my letter Q and make this kind of look like a quilt. So maybe you have some old, I don't know, an old t-shirt that has holes in it maybe and you can recycle it and use it to make your little letter Q today. You can decorate yours however you want to. This is just one idea. Okay, let's keep going. I'm almost done. I think I need two more. Let's put one right there and maybe I'll just choose this one for right there. Okay, so there you have it. We made a letter Q kind of look like a quilt. So now that we know what letter Q looks like, let's do some handwriting and learn how to write the letter Q. So to write the letter Q, you're going to make an O with a tail. <laughs> Let's try that again. Make an O and give it a little tail. Let's see what that looks like on the handwriting house. This is an uppercase Q, so it's going to be upstairs and downstairs all the way around. And then we're going to give it a tail. So make a big O, come into the middle of the O, and then slide out to the green carpet. An O with the tail. An O with the tail. Now you can write on your own paper if you'd like to, or the link below, your mom or dad or grandma can get a printable of this handwriting house, or if you don't have any paper at all, you can always just sky write. So that was the big uppercase Q. Would you like to show me your letter Q? Just hold it up to the screen. Let me see, hold it up to the camera and I'll cheer for you for working so hard on your handwriting. Well, now let's make the little letter Q. So the little Q, if the big Q had a big O, the little Q has a little O like this. So make a little O and then come beside it. We're going to make a line that goes down and then it jumps up like a cricket. Let me show you that again. So make a little O and then a line that goes down and jump up like a little cricket. Let's see what that looks like on the handwriting house. The little O is going to be downstairs. And then we're going to make a line that's right beside it all the way down and it jumps up. So a little O and then down and jump. So make that little O go all the way down. It looks like an A, doesn't it? But keep going to the basement and jump up just a little bit. This is a teenager letter, so it's going to hang out in the basement just a little bit. I'll make a few more to give you a chance to try. So down and jump. A little low downstairs and jump up. Down and jump. One more. 
Okay, that's the little letter Q. How are you doing on your handwriting? Great work, everybody. Thank you for working so hard. Now we're going to do some phonics. We know what letter Q looks like. We know how to write the letter Q. So phonics is just learning what sound letter Q makes. And Q makes this sound, qua, qua, qua. Can you try to make that sound? Qua, qua, qua. Good job, let's do it again. Q says qua, 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 as in quiet. Q says qua, 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 and that's our hand motion for letter Q. Put your finger on your lips and pretend you're saying shh, quiet. <laughs> letter Q says qua, 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 as in quiet. Well, we're going to play the quiet game today to help us remember that Q says qua, as in quiet. So I'm going to say, on your marks, get set, go, and then see if you can be really quiet. We'll see who wins the quiet game, okay? On your marks, get set, go. Whoa, that is such a hard game for me to play. It's hard to be so quiet. <laughs> what does letter Q say? Q says, qua, 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 as in quiet. Very good. Let's play that one more time. On your marks, we're going to play the quiet game. Get set, go. That was so hard, wasn't it? Well, what does letter Q say? Q says qua, 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 as in quiet. <laughs> and that was our letter of the daytime. I'll tell you, you did a great job. You won the quiet game, but I know who didn't win. Those noisy crickets didn't win the quiet game. <laughs> Okay, so that was our letter of the daytime, and now on to math. For math today, we're going to be working on the number four. We worked on number four already this week, but let's do it again. So make an L, and then make a number one right beside it. I'll show you that again. So make an L and then a number one right beside it. That's the number four. On the handwriting house, the L is going to be upstairs, and then the number one is gonna be upstairs and downstairs like that. So number four, L upstairs, and then a one right beside it. Good job. Okay, well, we're gonna do something fun and crickets love to jump. So we, for math today, are gonna jump four times. We're gonna count as we jump. So stand up. Are you ready? We're gonna jump four times. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Good job. Well, crickets have compound eyes. We'll talk about that during science, but we're gonna blink our eyes four times. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. As you can hear, crickets like to chirp, so we're gonna chirp four times. Here we go. Chirp, 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 chirp. The way that crickets chirp is they're rubbing their legs together. So let's rub our arms together four times. Here we go, help me count. One, two, three, four. I feel like we were getting some exercise today. Well, that was our math time. And now it's time for our color for today, which is the color green, my favorite color. Let's see if you remember how to spell green. G 
R E E N G R E E N. I know how to spell green. G R E E N. Caterpillars are green and grasshoppers are too. I know how to spell green. G R E E N. Well, let me show you something that's green. Look at my little cricket headband. What color is it? It's green. We're going to make this during art today. I just want you to remember this color is green. Now we're going to do our shape practice. And for this week, we've been working on the rectangle. How many sides does a rectangle have? Four, a rectangle has four sides and two sides are short and two sides long. You wanna to try to do that? A rectangle has two sides short and two sides long. Good job. Well, we're gonna build a rectangle today. I'm using popsicle sticks, but you could use crayons too. They were just perfect. But I'm putting two sides that are short and now I'm gonna build my long side. So I'm using two popsicle sticks together to make a long side. So there's one long side and here's another long side. What shape is this? It's a rectangle. No matter which way I turn it, it's still a rectangle. Do you know how I know? Because there are two sides that are short and two sides long, and there are four sides all together. So that was our shape practice, and now it's time to make that cricket headband. So let's head over to the art table, everybody. Well, here we are at the art table, and we're gonna make a cricket headband. There'll be a link below so that you can get all these printables. And if you don't have this printable with the Cricut eyeballs, you could just cut out two circles. Okay, so let's cut our two eyes out like this. There's one. And let's cut the other one. Okay, so there are the two eyes. Next, we're going to cut this green paper into two strips. One, two. Okay, now we're gonna glue these eyes onto the strips. onto this one strip right here. There's one eyeball and there's another eyeball. Now I'm gonna flip this over and I'm using a red pipe cleaner like this. I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to tape it right here to the back of this green strip, the one that had the eyeballs. Here we go. Let's flip it over and see what that looks like. Oh, that's very cute. So next, all I'm going to have to do is tape this green paper to the other green paper. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to tape the other side. And there you have it, we made a really cute Cricut headband for art today. Now I'm gonna come back over and we're going to do some science together. For science today, we're going to be talking about the parts of a Cricut. As you can see here, there are three main parts of a Cricut. There's the head right here. And so I'm just gonna um, put the head, I glued the head right here. The, I, there were some labels, I'll go back so you can see. And the printable, you can get the printable 
at the link below if you'd like this too, but I'm going to just glue, see the head right here. H is for head. Now the next part that you can see is this part right here on the cricket. This is called the thorax and TH is what you're looking for. TH says th, th, th for the thorax. We talk about TH in calendar time, TH like th, th, Thursday. So put the TH word thorax right there in the middle. And now I want to tell you how you can remember that that part is the thorax. So I bet you might have heard of the superhero Thor. He's really strong. Thor has really big, strong muscles right here on this part of his body. And so there's the head, there's my head, and then here's where your muscles would be right here on this part. Thor has big muscles. And so this middle part on the cricket is called the thorax. But just think about those big muscles, where would they be? They would be right here below the head. So that's called the thorax. And then there's another part right here at the end of the cricket, and that's called the abdomen, abdomen. So we'll put that right there. Look for A, B, ab, abdomen. Okay, so let's talk about those three parts one more time. There's the head, the thorax, and by the way, the thorax is where all the legs come out from, that middle part. And then the, the last part there is the abdomen. Okay, now let's go back to the head because I see two things sticking out of the head. Those are called antenna. So let's pull the antenna word right there, A-N-N, -N, antenna. Okay, also on the head, I see some eyes, but a cricket has what we call compound eyes. Let me show you what that looks like on our little headband we made. Take a look. Do you see all those different little parts? Well, a cricket's eye has lots of different parts, so we call that a compound eye. So you're gonna look for the letter C. C is for compound, compound eye. Okay, now I bet you've noticed these long legs in the back. L is for legs. There are also four short legs in the front on the cricket. So let's glue our L-E-G-S legs right there. And then finally, a cricket has some wings. W is for wings. So let's pull that word right there, w -w wings. Now a cricket has wings, but it doesn't fly around like a butterfly. The, rings base, the wings basically just help it to go a little bit further distance when it jumps. The four little legs in the front are for walking and the two long legs in the back are for jumping. So those are the parts of a cricket. Now let's take a look at some real crickets. We've been hearing them chirping all during class today. Let's take a look at them. Okay, can you spot all the parts on the cricket? Can you see the head? Can you see the middle part where the legs are coming out? That's the thorax. Big, strong legs like Thor. Can you see the bottom part of the cricket? That's the abdomen. You can try to count all of the legs if you want to. I'm going to try to hold this steady, as steady as I can. Do you see all his legs, the two big jumper legs in the back? You maybe can even see his little mouth moving. I know it's hard to see his eye from this angle. I'll move it around. Wow, look at those crickets. Now I really want you to see those little spiky things right there on the back of his leg. Do you see those little pokey things on the back leg? Can you see that? Those little spiky or pokey things on the backs of his legs are what's making the chirping sound. I'll demonstrate that for you. So those little things on the back of his legs are kind of like combs. When you take two combs, maybe you can try this at home and you rub them together, it makes a sound. 
kind of a little chirpy sound. And that's what the cricket's doing. It's just taking those little pokey parts on the back of its leg and rubbing them together. And that's what's making it chirp. Now I'm gonna read a story to you now for story time and it's called The Very Quiet Cricket. But in the story, it says that the cricket's gonna rub his wings together and try to chirp. But that's not true. That's not really how crickets chirp. God designed crickets so that their legs have those little pokey parts. And when those are rubbed together, that's what makes the chirp. But in the story, it's going to say wings, but we know better because we learned it today in science. Those crickets are making that chirping sound by rubbing their legs together. But this is still a fun story to read. Let's do that right now. It's called The Very Quiet Cricket by Eric Carl. One warm day from a tiny egg, a little cricket was born. Welcome, chirped a big cricket, rubbing his wings together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Good morning, whizzed a locust spinning through the air. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Hello, whispered a praying mantis, scraping its huge front legs together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good day, crunched a worm, munching its way out of an apple. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed, not a sound. Hi, bumbled a spittlebug, slurping in a sea of froth. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Good afternoon, screeched a cicada clinging to a branch of a tree. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Bzzz, from flower to flower. The little cricket wanted to answer, fine, and how are you? So he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good evening, word a dragonfly gliding above the water. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good night, hmm, hummed the mosquitoes, hmm, dancing among the stars. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. A luna moth sailed quietly through the night, and the cricket enjoyed the stillness. As the luna moth went silent, another cricket, she too was a very quiet cricket. Then he rubbed his wings, time, <gasps> Chirp! He chirped the most beautiful sound that she had ever heard. So he wasn't a quiet cricket at all in the end, and these crickets certainly haven't been very quiet today. <laughs> I'm going to go outside now that our class is over and put them back into the grass so they can go back home. But I'm super duper glad that we got to see one of God's creations up close and personal. We had a lot of fun today talking about crickets and the number four and the letter Q and playing the quiet game. And we even built a rectangle with some sticks. I hope you'll come back next time for letter R. R is for rocks. I'll see you then. Goodbye.